It's no surprise to anyone that hardware wallets and or signing devices can be compromised and they can be hacked. Most recently, we saw a story come up about a, a hack called Dark Skippy, which essentially places malicious firmware on your hardware wallet or signing device, which then leaks your private key and eventually an attacker can then use that compromised information to send all of the Bitcoin whenever they choose from your hardware wallet and or signing device to one of theirs, right? Effectively draining your wallet of its funds. Now, this sounds very serious and indeed it is, but what is the likelihood of this happening? What type of situation do you need to put yourself into in order for this to occur? Let's take, uh, let's take a different look at this whole scenario. In this demonstration, our signing device has been corrupted, having malicious firmware swapped in to the SD card slot. Now, the user who doesn't know their device has malicious firmware is going to load in their seed phrase and sign a Bitcoin transaction. They believe they're safe because they're signed. So right there, we see in the video from Dark Skippy, which I'm going to put this uh, all this information in the show notes so you guys can check it out yourself and you can go watch the entire the entire video uh, yourself. I'm using two specific points in the video in order to illustrate or a summary of the issue. But essentially what we just saw right there, right, was uh, a person putting in their seed phrase into the compromised device. Now, a couple of things. Uh, number one, this firmware had to be installed on the device prior to you using it, which indicates a couple of things. Number one, uh, that it was, quote unquote, possibly compromised at the factory, right, or at the manufacturer, okay? Uh, number two, if that wasn't the case, then somehow somebody uh, that you knew or maybe didn't know and you maybe kept your device in an unsafe location and someone else was able to get physical access to your signing device, hardware wallet, right? I keep using these two terms interchangeably to essentially get it into people's heads that it's not really a hardware wallet, it is a signing device. But anyways, um, those are essentially the two main scenarios where this type of thing can happen. So if, if your signing device, right, um, if your signing device is kept in a secure location where no one else has access to it, there is a good possibility that you will not fall victim to this type of attack. Um, uh, another good mitigation strategy is anytime you get a brand new signing device, number one, you only purchase it directly from the manufacturer themselves, i.e. like a like a cold card or a Trezor or even the Blockstream Jade. You buy it directly from them. You don't get it from Amazon. You don't get it from eBay. You don't buy it from somebody on the street like that. This is all these are all ways in which uh, you can end up getting screwed. Um, now, this particular video has to do with the seed signer. And you would say, well, Phil, Seed Signer is free and open source, and I can just go buy all my own hardware. Well, in this case, you would be downloading the firmware from the manufacturer. So let's say you were to purchase this device or you were to purchase the hardware for it. Um, you would go and download your own firmware. Let's say you purchased a finished device from um, a reseller that actually, because there are a few that build Seed Signer devices and, and give them to you, quote unquote, um, ready made. Well, in that case, what you can do as a best practice is download the firmware yourself, verify the signature, okay, ensuring that that is the proper so uh, software from the correct manufacturer, and then you would then install the firmware prior to your first use of the device, which means if it did have compromised firmware, um, you would no longer be susceptible to that because you've now installed known good firmware um, that you were able to verify the signature for. So these are ways in which you can mitigate that attack, but you could see already um, it's not that simple to end up in the situation where this attack becomes plausible. The next part of the video has to do with the compromised transaction itself. Everything looks normal as usual. 
let's take a look at what the attacker sees. The attacker is watching the mempool for incoming transactions, checking each one for a particular watermark. And boom, we've exfiltrated the entire 12 word seed phrase in just a single transaction, using the Bitcoin blockchain as the communication channel. As the attacker, we can now sit on these seed words and steal the funds whenever we decide is best. Dark Skippy is covert, hard to detect, and even works on stateless signing devices. So there you have it, right? They explained essentially how they did it. it you see that the transaction that they did required two inputs. I believe that one of those inputs is the watermark or the, the trace that they're looking for in order to find that transaction on the blockchain and in order to actually start taking that in order to actually start analyzing that data and breaking it down. So again, right, in order to end up in this situation, all of these other things had to take place, okay, somebody had to have access to your hardware wallet, and or it had to be compromised by the in uh, at the manufacturer level. Okay, so this is this is not that simple to end up in this situation. Now, you're probably also wondering, well, uh, maybe I don't want to get a hardware wallet, i.e., signing device that I have to um, that I have to flash the firmware, or that I feel that I have to flash the firmware. I mean, essentially, um, that should be a best practice, anyways, right? Because we're supposedly these don't trust verify people, but yet at the same time we're like don't trust verify. But I love this whole, uh, this hardware wallet manufacturer, so I'm just going to use it. Um, no. Uh, it, you definitely should flash the firmware. Um, there are certain hardware wallet manufacturers, i.e. signing device manufacturers, that do not, um, sorry, that have a secure element, okay? And essentially, uh, what that does, okay, is that if you try to load bogus firmware on that, there is a check that's going to take place, and the hardware device itself is going to let you know if that firmware appears to be tampered with. Uh, so the cold card is one that does that. Um, but anyways, my, my point is, is that it's very difficult to end up in this scenario. Uh, Dark Skippy in particular targeted Seed Signer, and it's kind of interesting what ended up uh, coming about uh, out of that because uh, the Seed Signer account put out a tweet. It makes sense that two of the three authors are founding a hardware wallet company. Naturally, their first public act representing that new company would be to take a swing at an open source project. Abusing open source has been CoinKite's marketing strategy, so why not? And you can see right here from the screenshot, uh, you've got the authors, the co-founders of the upcoming next generation hardware wallet, Frost Snap. Um, and essentially, you can see the incentives now for the, the dark Skippy exploit. Um, it, it really has kind of has nothing to do, um, with alerting the quote unquote Bitcoin community, uh, to, to an exploit. It's, it, it was really in my eyes anyways, and based on, based on, uh, seed signers tweet, it, it just seemed like a marketing stunt, you know, and now obviously, you know, the, the damage is, you know, the damage is done. And and then we see a again right a response uh, from Robin Linus one of the one of the people behind this project, uh, so he comes uh, he comes back and uh, Seed Signer posted this tweet and he said uh, Robin said sorry it came across like that we didn't intend to make your product look bad Seed Signer is a great project and I love that it's Foss but in all fairness this is after the fact right the damage is done um, so yeah. Was, was this really all about um, divulging an exploit to the community or was it about marketing and concern trolling? And of course, right, if you look at it, it says, you know, what does the marketing say? Hey, guys, you can't trust this type of device by my device. So this is, this is essentially, you know, this is essentially what we're seeing. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, don't think it's a, I don't think it's a really good look. Um, on Frost Snap's part, I I do believe uh, that I believe that hardware wallet manufacturers, any product really, um, can if it's actually offering value and the product actually stands on its own merits, then um, it should be able to do so, and you should be able to simply tout the the pros of your products without having to 
uh, bash and dismantle your competition because the truth of the matter is, is that if you look at it from the outside, all you see is somebody who is essentially trying to dissuade you from paying attention to the competition. And unfortunately, if somebody is not actually providing the products and services that they say they are, then that would be a reason to keep you from looking somewhere else. So anyways, uh, look, it's business, right? It's business and this is competition and this is how it goes. But really the grand scheme of this is guys, even though this is indeed an exploit, um, I, I think that people need to take it um, objectively. This is the reason why I did this video, just to kind of explain that, you know, you're not going to end up in this scenario so easily. And if you do use certain best practices, you, you shouldn't have to fall victim to this. Uh, and of course, right, there are, like I said, specific hardware wallets uh, that you can, signing devices that you can purchase where uh, there's actually detection for, um, for bogus, you know, for bogus or tampered compromised firmware. Anyways, guys, good luck out there. It is still, it is still the Wild West. This is what I wanted to talk about today. Catch you tomorrow.